Welcome to Chillin' with Ice with me, Lori Fetrick, or most of you know me as Ice from the American Gladiators. Thank you for joining me on this podcast where we're gonna dive in and go behind the scenes on the number one hit iconic show of the 90s. It's time to get up close and personal on what drove us to be gladiators, what challenges we faced, and how we overcame to reach all of our goals. I know in this first season, inquiring minds want to know, was there drama, fights, hookups? Are we all still friends? What did we do in our personal lives and how are we staying in such good shape years later? Well, stay right here and let's get into Chillin' with Ice. Before we dive into our incredible episode today, I want to let you know that this is a self-funded podcast and I would love your support. For the cost of a cup of coffee a month, you can donate to my Patreon page and that would make all the difference in the world. For the small donation, you will get back so much in rewards, like you can watch all of my podcasts on video. I will have exclusive content like behind the scenes footage, a private Facebook group where you can interact with me directly and other VIP fans, a monthly Q&A, direct shout outs and follows from me to you on your social media and so much more. Find me on Patreon at Chillin' With Ice or click the link in the show notes now. Okay, let's dive in. Welcome back to Chillin' With Ice. And on today's episode, I have an amazing gladiator, but I had to go all the way over to the UK to find her. And if you're a gladiator fan, everybody knows who this woman is. And I have my little nickname for her, and that is Jet Jet Baby. <laughs> Diane Udell, how are you this morning? I say this morning because it's 10 o'clock my time, but you're way, what is it, six o'clock your time right now? It is six o'clock Sunday evening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I've just been so looking forward to this and I'll catch up. So thank I you. I know. Me too. We had to catch up on a podcast of all things, you know? <laughs> so I am going to, I'm going to let the, the American audience, I have an array of things that you've done. So you just sit back and, and just listen to this because I've been listening to the Glad Pod, which is the UK version podcast of what I'm doing over here right now. And if you haven't listened to the Glad Pod, go to iTunes. I know it's on all the Spotify and everything. It's called Glad Pod. And it's an amazing podcast. But this woman here, <laughs> I was listening to it and I was on YouTube and I saw all these things. So you have done so much in your life. It's unbelievable. So here's just a few of the things that Diane Udell Jet from the Gladiators has done. And that is She's a gymnast, she's a dancer, she's an actor, she's a fitness competitor, a host, a podcaster, an aerobic instructor, a dance instructor, a singer. She plays the flute, a showman, and now she's a psychologist, but overall she was a gladiator in the UK. <laughs> that <laughs> is a list of things that you have done in your life. I mean, girl, you should just be so incredibly proud of what you have accomplished. Oh, I try to be, and I'm going to be uh, slightly self effacive and say, oh, I don't know, I can't. <laughs> All that list was like huge. Uh, I guess the biggest thing I've been doing as a psychotherapist for the last ooh, 23 years, since my accident on Gladiators. Uh, okay. Just yeah, it just took me back to what I really wanted to do from being a child. So, yeah. Really? So since you were a child, you wanted to be a psych. Is it a, you're a psychologist? We call it a psychologist over here. Okay. You call, I hear, I hear you say a psychotherapist. Is there yeah. a difference? There is. So okay. a psychologist often be an academic who is looking at um, field studies, at case studies and arresting into academia. Whereas a psychotherapist, like a counselor, uh, we do face-to-face and actually do go alongside the journey with another person. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. But I do love the science behind the, the psychology of it all. And I've been wanting to do that since I was a child. And I think my accident on GLADS, which you'll come to, um, kind of helped me do that because I'd saved up enough money to go back to university and study. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah. So are you are you still dancing? Are you still doing any kind of choreography? I know that's a big passion of yours. 
I'm 53. I mean, <laughs> we're down to dance and perform. <laughs> I'm 53. But the hair can flip. The body can move, but no, I can still put together routines and choreograph for other people. Um, and I love going to dance zumba and still teach. Um, but as for myself as a performer, no, the days yeah. are gone. <laughs> how about your singing? How about how about that fantastic singing career that you had? <laughs> Stop it! I was never a singer. You know that. I can hold a tune. I like to be in a chorus, but never solo. I was kind of pushed into it as soon as Muff Murphy. Can you hear the voice of the gladiators and all that? I'm like, you can sing. I'm going to write an album for you. And I, I, I wrote a couple of songs. I'm like, shite. Sorry, 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 American audience, but that's an English term for crap. Just completely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know what that the one video that i remember i mean it was awesome come on you had a you had to have a good time with that video <laughs> so you want me to be da, 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 that one yeah i think so exactly i remember <laughs> uh i went with you once and you were doing it like kind of a live type of singing thing i'm not quite sure where it was it was after gladiators but look at you you, you like totally remember that <laughs> <laughs> and really by like the it. way yes i am wearing the gladiator t-shirt to represent you guys today that's amazing is that the british one yes this is that's this so is the british this is the british glad t-shirt rolled up the arms so you can show your arms off still Brilliant. come on <laughs> of course I have a list of questions, but I know we're not going to get through all of them today. Um, I guess what um, I mean, obviously, your UK knows this, but let's let's go into the American version. And that is how did gladiators find you or how did you find gladiators? I've been in a kind of a fitness magazine and there was some pictures of me. And I think one of the producers, Andrew Norgate, had followed the lead. I was talking like 30 years ago when like media links and leads were very hard and he found a, a video of me doing a, a figure fitness so I was three cartwheeling back somersaulting and I was cut very cut and very in condition and I just got a phone call out of the blue saying um this is Andrew Norgate from LWT was London weekend television um uh, we'd like to speak to Diane Udale and I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> then I, I was, I'd say headhunted but I was like body hunted actually <laughs> right and that was it and then the next thing I knew I was um up at Woolwich Barracks which is a big uh, army uh barracks in the south of London uh doing the army assault course I loved it um and the gym tests which I just sell through yeah and, uh, and the, <laughs> you know, the funny thing was though I don't think there was many other girls at the time that could actually do it so I think they selected me by like you know, by negativity whim. Like, I've been with the gladiator. I'm like, because you've got nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Oh, uh, but I mean, come on, look what came out of that. I mean, maybe I don't, don't even, don't even sell yourself short on that. Are you kidding? I mean, come on, beautiful, athletic. You could do anything. I mean, why wouldn't they choose you? That was just, it was an amazing, I know I've, I've heard your story on your tryouts and everything. And so it's, it's funny how that happened, but um, how many girls did you think that were at your tryouts? Possibly around two, oh, gosh. I'm kidding. <laughs> You joke, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But that's that's that is so amazing. So now when you tried out and they 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 chose you, did you know what you were in for? Did you see the American version first before you tried out? Briefly. Um I I'd watch you guys. <laughs> um, uh, I think in the middle of the night at like two o'clock in the morning about two shows thinking I think I had an Indian curry takeaway or something 
And I was just like watching going, what, what, what is this? So when they did, I had at least a, an idea. So when they called me and I did the tryouts, I thought I was going to be a contender. And I went, oh, we want you to be a gladiator. So I had seen you. Oh, amazing. I was like, no way. That's fierce. That's too much. And they said, we want you to be a gladiator. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I thought it was a contender. <laughs> no, okay. we need you. Like, and they did say to me at the time, they said, um, can you get bigger? I'm like, I can try. <laughs> <laughs> at least a year of training heavy weights. And I'm not, oh, honestly, it, it was a schlep, but they were like, no, we need you. We need you. <laughs> at least we've got one female gladiator. <laughs> Oh, I, it's, it's so crazy. So it, it it is, it's like the whole journey. Did you even remotely think that your character and you were going to take off and literally, and I'm going to say this, and I know you're super shy and super kind of, because I've listened to your, your interviews, you're very humble about this, but yes, you were the most popular gladiator over there. You know it. You know it in your heart. I know it's hard to like come to that, but did you really think that your character is going to take off and do that? No, not at all. Of, of course. I think Wolf was probably, <laughs> can I do that again? <laughs> I think Wolf was the, the most popular. And I think on the female side, initially, there was something about me um, that the British public uh, liked. I think it's because I flicked my hair a lot. <laughs> it was up. and and wait and the foot that goes over the head <laughs> yeah. right and um yeah and also the boobs up in the bra and and yeah it's something about the smile and the giddiness and just uh, again being a bit self-evasive because you know the british public um uh, don't like oh i'm gonna win i'm gonna take you down it, I knew that that wouldn't work, um, but that was just instinctive. That wasn't just about me kind of analyzing it. Um, I just think there was something about being really honest in the arena, as you well know yourself. Um, your arena was a bit smaller. By the time it came over to England, we had this huge, was it 9,000 live in the arena? Um, these huge big rigs and these big sets and about nine cameras filming at every second of each moment so they capture every angle um you couldn't hide anywhere and you you just had to kind of be be present and be who you are um and as, even with the show that's coming back on the bbc which we'll probably come to as well um all i say is just let them be themselves let them form their own character because the camera doesn't lie um yeah. if you're if you're happy and honest with your own bravado and mine was to be a bit shy uh and giggly and hair flicky and nervous and just do flip flaps and somersaults so that the camera can't watch your bum <laughs> you had a sex appeal to you though you had a very very big sex appeal that what was sexy about it is that you weren't even trying and when you don't try and you have that smile and you have that body it just and, and you in the way that you perceived yourself Everybody loved it. And that's why your character took off. You were just amazing on camera. No matter how you tried to hide or not, you were amazing on camera. <laughs> now let's get into, I was going to say, yes, explain to, you know, my American audience what your arena was like, because see the American audience, I mean, all we know is being in the studio, we maybe had 200 people in our audience now oh. you're you're when you were filming, it was like for us going out on tour and actually competing in the arenas, Madison Square Gardens and all that. But you guys did this on a daily basis. I mean, explain to my audience what that was like, how many people you performed in front of and just the energy. Gosh, um, so that that would have been one of my questions back to you. I know it's, you're questioning me, but that's all good. This, but the shooting lot from where you went to to suddenly going to this huge, like, uh, cathedral like, vacuous, cosmic kind of place of, of, of performing, um, it, that must have felt really weird. But for us, it was our first home, it's what we knew. 
Um, and I guess I think because you're so fo super focused on the event and your contender itself, you d you kind of for me as a performer before Glads, um, you just focus in on what you're doing and make sure you do it really well. <laughs> so for me, it was it didn't matter whether it was two people watching or two thousand people watching live, let alone at the end of the camera. And then again in England, we didn't have very many TV channels, so people were kind of corralled, <laughs> kind of into into having to watch Glads on a Saturday night. So it became very popular. But I guess I guess for me, it just it, yeah, it didn't it didn't really affect me that much. But I was thinking about you earlier, and I was thinking. For many reasons, um, just about <laughs> how that must have been going from a shooting lot to suddenly going into these big, like Madison Gardens arenas, and what was that like? And I'm sorry to throw it back. No, to you, but, but uh, come on, you're a podcaster. Are you kidding? You can we can go back and forth. It's all good. So it's interesting for us. Um, I think okay. I can't remember if we came to you before our tour or after the tour. I want to say we came to you before the tour. You know, yeah, we came yeah. to, to England. So your arena, believe it or not, was the first arena we actually oh. competed in with that. Not, did, it, did it hold 9,000, you said? Yeah. Okay, so that was the yeah. first time we were actually in front of 9,000 people. And wow. for us, going from a small shooting set to 9,000 people, I remember just feeling the energy just going through my body. And you're right. It didn't affect me because it was like your focus, you know, was on the event. Yeah, exactly. But before the event and after the event, it was just amazing. We were all yeah. the American gladiators. We were looking around going, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, um, it was, it was incredible. And, it, and the other thing is, as I noticed is like, you guys had like music playing, you know, in yeah. between different events, like wild thing, which is funny. I was listening to that this morning. Cause I was listening to the interview you did with um, Wolf and I noticed yeah. his song is wild thing. And we used that song as well when we were out on tour and that was Nitro's song, wild thing. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah it was it was pretty amazing going from a just a set a small set going out on tour and going over to Birmingham and and performing in front of 9000 people it was just like wow so yeah Did i mean you, doing that for you guys on a daily basis it was i must it I must it must have been just amazing this episode's actually sponsored by ice t-shirts.com and you can get your OG gladiator hat. You can get your OG t-shirt. You can get chilling with ice hats, chilling with ice t-shirts. I have all kinds of fun stuff on it. So go to ice t-shirts.com today. The thing is, we didn't know anything less. We didn't know anything less. Um, and I, I guess it's like yourself. I don't know. I can't speak for you, but if once you're confident of what you know, you know, you can do, if that makes sense. It doesn't matter whether you, as I said, perform it to two people or 20,000 people or whatever. It doesn't matter. You just got to do your job and have fun and make sure once you land on the crash mat, you can walk away from it. <laughs> rather than being, hey, you drop onto a gurney, into an ambulance. <laughs> given that you know, let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about the games for a moment, because since you were in such a large arena, you're events could be kind of a little bit larger than life than ours. Like for instance, um, pole axe. Okay. I'm going to have you explain that one for a minute. And then there was like the pendulum, you know, I mean, the first time I saw your, is that what it's called? Pendulum? Yeah. The first time I saw that, I was like, oh my God, what is that thing? <laughs> So explain to the Americans, because I know they probably haven't seen it, because I don't know why your your show doesn't play over here or why it didn't show over here, but it would have been cool if it did. But Polax, let's go with that one for a minute. Can you explain that one to my American audience? <laughs> like, how tall was that thing? I don't know. It was uh, probably, oh, God, 60, 80 meters tall, easily. And what it was, it was like a <laughs> pole, basically. Um, with these that spiral, like you know, like a helter skelter, going all the way up. 
with these little pins that came out in a helter skelter. Imagine like a like a hairbrush type thing, like this sort of thing. But like, you know, goes like that. So I'm being a bit random, but it goes all the way up in a helter skelter uh, way, these little poles. And the, the job of the gladiator was to chase on another pole separate to that, that pole, um, a contender. So it was who would get up to the top of the pole axe before the other and press a big red plunger at the very top. And when you did that, so whoever was behind you, whether it was contender or the gladiator, these little tiny little poles that you could like fall up this pole in would retract. So you'd slide down the pole. Like a would you slide down the pole or fall down the pole? <laughs> Usually you'd have to push yourself up and try and do a proper like um, a stunt fall because you were falling onto a, um, uh, you know, the inflatable mattress, like a stunt fall person. Yeah. Uh, and I never did it because <laughs> in rehearsals, I went up, I went up, I went up, the poles went in, I pressed the plunger and I fell back and I fell onto the this airbed. I fell onto the airbed and my, I, I, instead of keeping my body rigid, which they'd instructed, <laughs> I went all floppy and my knee hit myself in my own face. Oh. And my, nose, my nose ended up the other side of my face. Oh. Zodiac crawled onto the airbag because I was going, oh, oh, I think I've broken my nose. And she came onto the, she went, Jet. I went, I can see my nose out <laughs> the other side. I said, please tell me my nose isn't broken. She went, Jet, your nose is broken. <laughs> oh. So relaxed. And eventually, it was only the cartilage uh, yeah. at the end. It pulled back within about two or three days. I'll and, be honest uh, with you. I'll be honest, when I went over there and you guys had the pole axe and we were supposed to do that, I was like, oh. no, I'm not doing oh. it. I, w I refused to do it because I saw it. I was like, oh, shit, I need, I'm no, there's no way I'm doing that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and the other thing I did not do because it looked kind of crazy was the pendulum. I didn't do that one either when I was over there. Explain that one. So that yeah, so it was like a massive ball of about ooh, 30, 40, 50 foot diameter swinging top of the arena very slowly to the right of the Valkyrie da, 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 with a cargo net across it. And what you had to do is the contender had a little tag on her back or his back and the gladiator's job was basically negotiate around this like a spider in a web and pull the tag and then you both released to this cargo net suspended above the arena. Uh, I think I did it once. Um, <laughs> it says it all. But it was spectacular. It was one of the biggest events, and it was visually beautiful. But I think, again, in the end, they kind of did a, it's too dangerous. Because they were falling onto a, a cargo net, like a you know, like when you do trapeze artists in a big circus. Yeah. And they can a similar thing and these big high falls with what were coming in basically in cacheting on the injury risk so again even though it was visually spectacular it was a hard event to do because it's all grip strength because once you've got the gravity going and all you've got is any negotiation uh, negotiating skills with your upper arms and forearms but if you've been a gymnast as a kid, that would be all right. But for most people, they just so it, it kind of negated itself to some degree. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and, on that. And, and it's funny just, because I do know your favorite event, which is hang tough. I know that you're awesome at that. But what was your least favorite? Oh, it would have been joust, I guess. Because I'm not very pugilistic. Um, at the time I did glads when I was. 22 to 20 nearly 26 unfortunately my lower spine had a disc rupture so I had really bad sciatica so the pains down my left leg were really bad and um, every time I'd like go forward with force my left leg would literally give away so for me if I was ever put up on dual it, it would be more dread of the pain rather than the fear of losing and that probably isn't the right gladiatorial way to go into any. <laughs> so I really admired anybody who could do that really well, no matter how big or small, because obviously the podiums are set at a certain distance, aren't they? So they're like, you know, 
small girl with small levers, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of forward reach. And I was one of the smaller girls of the, all of them. So I was like, oh, no, I'm, if, I, if I do a really good power to the head and then to the butt to get them off, my leg's going to give away and I'll be off with them. That's not going to look very good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> now, it's interesting. You guys called your, your, we have a, we call it a joust. You guys call it dual, which, which totally makes sense in the UK. <laughs> Now, now here's a good question for you. And that is, how would you feel if they decided to do an actual documentary about you guys? Oh, it'd be amazing. And you know what? They'd all be, I can't speak for them all because they're not here, obviously. Um, but if they were to do it, it would be so good. And there's so many stories, as you well know. And you know, it's like a, it's like a camaraderie. Whenever we get to meet up, some of us every so often, collections of us go to these comic cons, uh, which I think came from America, and we just sit and cry, laughing with the memories. And if we were to do it with you guys as well, it would be so good. But yeah, I'm sure the the Brits, pretty much all of them. I can't speak for them, but yeah, they'd be so. Up I'm surprised. I'm surprised nobody's done a documentary yet. You know, our Netflix documentary just came out three days ago. I know. I saw I saw the trailer for it and I was sat with my partner going, Oh my god. <laughs> and how cool and I love the way they shot you in the middle of that big studio looking so cool. <laughs> I <was> so <laughs> cool. Done. And that production value. Do you know what? The glass deserves that. Particularly yeah. for you guys. You were the initiators, you were the founders and Samuel Metro Golden Mayor, who whoever thought up the idea, absolutely hats off. Beautiful, you know, it's iconic, isn't it? Really, it it really is. I mean, I you know because there's two documentaries that came out over here recently. One was Thirty for Thirty on ESPN that we opted out not to do, and then because we wanted to be on the Netflix series, and we got a five series, and apparently right now it's been on a, um, since Wednesday. I think it's been out almost a week and we're at number one on Netflix right now, which is absolutely amazing. But think about it, Diane. It's like everybody's craving that nostalgia of the 90s. Yeah. And yeah. so it's it was a simpler time. And so when they watch the documentary, they can, you know, you know this is, you know, a therapist. It's like they they crave that simplicity. And they crave that time. Like they can go, oh, I was in the backyard with my dad and we were building forts. And, you know, it's that <laughs> whole American gladiator time. So yeah. the documentary has brought back so many memories. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's just, and like you said, the UK version, I mean, if they had a UK version of the documentary, so many stories. It's just, you, you can't even get them in, all, all no. of them into a documentary. Yeah, absolutely right. And it's that whole family feel. You know, there yes. are not many shows where everybody, every generation of the family can sit and just for a whole hour and just be transfixed and get behind either the contender or their favourite gladiator or their event that they really loved. And just for an hour, just be harmonious and just be involved with what was going on on TV. Um, and I think for me, that's where the magic really is. Yeah. Absolutely. That is, it's so magical. Um, there's, it's so funny. I'm sitting here and I was thinking about this last night before, you know, it's kind of like, okay, so what are we going to talk about? And I was talking with my girlfriend and I said, interesting enough, I love this podcast because it gives me permission for an entire hour just to talk about gladiators with another gladiator. You know, because we're never going to get on the phone and go, so what was your show and the blah, blah, blah. You know, we just never, you don't talk like that, you know, when you're just on a personal phone call. So to me sitting here and, and having the podcast and having that permission to just talk gladiators is so refreshing and so much fun and going back down memory lane. So Let's go back to the international show. This was something, this was a question that was interesting. And that was, I'm wondering why they didn't take the international gladiators, and you're going to cringe when I say this, and put gladiator up against gladiator. Oh, I'm cringing. <laughs> Instead of... 
I mean, how cool would that have been now? I I think it would have just been decimation. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I don't think anybody would have crawled off any of those mattresses alive. (laughs) (laughs) That would have been so cool, though. (laughs) Great TV. Oh, they're dead. That's okay. That's fine. We just like cut to another event. (laughs) I mean, think about it, though. But think about it, Diane. It would have been so cool if you were to think about the concept of that. You were the best at the rings. I was yeah. pretty damn. I was pretty damn good at hang tough and having the best go against the best. Yeah, I'd have. I would have loved. I'd have been straight at you, straight off. But then you'd have been like you straight at me, straight off as well. And be like, yeah. So who wins here? It's like blindly. To make great TV, so hey, <laughs> great TV. So when you heard that um, there was going to be an international show, and that we were coming over, were you guys super excited? And who was? I just want to hear it. I just, I just want to hear you say it. Who was the most exciting <laughs> person that you wanted to meet? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I was really daunted, actually, really daunted, uh, because from what I'd seen on what they played us um, at LWT in London to kind of go, well, you're interested in doing this show. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure. Um, then do the tryouts and prove yourself. I'm like, well, I can do that in my sleep. That's OK. Uh, and then I thought of, after what two or three seasons before you guys came over, and then when you came over, I was like, oh, my God, I thought I was good. He was the queen of American gladiators. Actually coming over and she's going to bray my ass, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a fun time because I had never been out of the States before. You know, I had really? never, no, I had never traveled out of the States. So going over to England, you know, it was just such an amazing adventure. I mean, first of all, um, becoming friends with you. And I would have never seen anything in England if it hadn't been for you. So thank you so much because I got to, you got to show me around England a little bit after the gladiators. And so that was just the castles and, and just the history of England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had like a three day blast, didn't we? We went to Warwick Castle, then down into Surrey and Hampshire, and just into the countryside and that little restaurant. Oh, just amazing. It was an amazing time. You were the one, by the way, thank you for this, but you were the one who turned me on to Indian food because I remember Ah. we stopped at some little, it's, I swear to God, it looked like some little gas station. And you were like, we're going to get chicken tikka masala or something. I was like, what's that? Because first of all, here in America, we never buy anything from gas stations <laughs> or little convenience stores for that fact. But yeah, you turned me on to uh, Indian food. And it was just like ever since it's been so amazing. But I got to be honest, England has the best Indian food by far since I've been back. So oh, well, thank you for that. So yeah, the this the whole international, I think gladiators as a whole were such a big family that you guys also, you guys got to travel to Australia. We did, we did, yes, thank you for reminding me. We went down to the, we shot in Brisbane, and I think we got a, a stopover in Sydney, which was really, I mean, what an amazing experience. Uh, and to meet the Australian gladiators, they were lovely. So How long were you guys there? I think we were only there for about a week to 10 days um, because you've got to try and get the body clock to switch, <laughs> which was right. really bad. And again, the structure of the events is always slightly off to the one that you're used to. So hang tough, the rigging was slightly different. So mm. instead of being in a way that you could traverse and like swing really easily, it was like, oh, oh, no, oh, there's a ring. Oh, no, there's a ring just there. Oh, no, oh, oh. <laughs> really close. Uh, despite this enormous arena. So there's lots of things, lots of anomalies, which were really quite different to the British arena. Because as, as we've said before, we had this like huge, you know, cathedral-like kind of size of an arena. So wherever you go after that, 
if it's not that big, everything would have to be slightly condensed, I guess. Um, but you know what? They were so lovely. I just remember being, I just remember being jet lagged all the time because obviously your body clock goes whoop. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and, and things hanging from trees looking like crows and actually, I mean, big, big. There were bats, <gasps> fruit bats everywhere, looking like crows, just hanging from trees upside down. In the wow. evening, they're like, coming up and I'd be like what the I love all animals and stuff I'm like wow that's one of my lasting memories as well as dropping the Harley Davidson motorbike in the middle of the arena um which is wait wait parts. wait wait you what <laughs> what was that so I hadn't learned to ride a motorbike but my my, my head told me that I had but I hadn't so <laughs> Worked this motorbike, this Harley Davidson. It was like two Harley Davidsons as the winner. Uh, the winner would get with the ashes. Went to the Australian prize and however many thousands of pounds and an international tour with everybody. They'd be like zip, zip, zip. <laughs> you did not. You dropped it. I did. And all the crew were going, "You dropped it. You have to buy it." I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can't even believe you dropped the bike. Um, all right. So interesting enough, I heard that the Australians, they were all in character to where they actually yeah. played a character and they were scripted to where you guys and us, we were not scripted. We got to be ourselves. So was that kind of bizarre? I think so. And I think that's that was my ongoing uh, when anybody says, oh, what, what would be any tips for any future gladiators or any like scripting or shows? I said, just don't don't script your glass. Let them be who they are. Let the audience choose who they want to like this demographs, isn't it? There's someone for everyone. And that's so important. But that can't happen if it's ingenuous. So you have to be authentic in who you are and I, I don't know I didn't I didn't see any of the production staff if I think back then um in Australia I just remember them looking very nervous and tense all the time I'm like but you guys are beautiful you wonderful athletes just be who you are you know yeah um, and this day and I'm, I'm sure you concur with that <laughs> um well what they what they allowed us to do is be our own brand within the yeah. brand <laughs> you know, like Jet is a brand, Ice is a brand, Wolf is a brand. And so yeah. when you become that brand within the brand, you can shine, you yeah. know, as long as they allow you to do that. And I think mm -hmm. the scripted version, okay, so even like the reboot over here in 208, right. they tried to make them scripted and they overproduced the show. Right. It didn't yeah. work. It, yeah. And that's what Sky did over here in, again, 2007, 2008. And it just didn't work. Mm -mm. It really, I don't know. It's a shame. But we've got this new show coming out on BBC One. A BBC channel, my goodness. Um, and I hope the production value. I've heard there's been some appalling injuries. But it goes with the territory. I think you and I both. <laughs> totally yeah, yeah, injuries. Well, but, but here's the thing with injuries is like I say, it's like we're athletes. If we can't tape it, ice it or shoot it up with cortisone, we're going back out and we're performing. <laughs> and because as you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure it was the same over there as it was here. But if we didn't play, we didn't get yeah. paid. Yep, you know, there, there was right. no income if we didn't play. So therefore, it's like, tape it up, ice it, shoot me with quarters on. I'm going back out, coach. <laughs> to stick it, super glue, I don't care. <laughs> exactly, exactly, super glue it. So there's already, I mean, that's part of the gladiator thing is injuries. It's just, um, hopefully, the production company would take better care of their so-called athletes, which are gladiators. Yeah, yeah. and hopefully that they're and not just fodder, which was a, a word that was bandied around initially. Uh, right. Apparently, I don't know. Quote not quote on, on the English show. So yeah, we just need because I think initially they were looking at stunt artists, but they're like 
300,000, uh, not as a 3,000, not uh, 900 pound a fall. So we're doing like 20 foot, 30 foot falls pretty much on most events. Um, and that would have cost a lot of money if the, if we were stunt artists. So they said, just they just get people off the street, fitness, bigger bodybuilders. <laughs> right. Athletes, athletes on the downturn and uh, use them as fodder. Let's dress them up, make them look amazing, give them a gladiator name and suddenly oh. they're there. Like it was it was only rumoured, sorry, I I I've got to say it was only rumoured, so it's not factual, but there was a, there was an element of that, I think. Because they knew how difficult it was gonna be. And the insurances, I'm sure, in health and safety with most things, particularly these days, but back then, that I think they were being very wary. So they tried the best, I'm sure. <laughs> um, two two things came out of that. One I want to ask and and remind me about the um see I already lost it. Um your name. Your name. Okay, so how did you feel when you found out that American version had your name? Ooh, good question. And I was going to ask you about the same when the uh British, I think uh, Yeah, the, you guys used my name as well. Oh, I know. They used it on the is it the Sky version? Yes. I had nothing Caroline Pierce, bless her. Um, I was like, why are they calling her Ice? There's only one Ice in the world. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Okay. Same thing with you, though. When they had your name over here, how did? What was your first reaction right when you heard that? I was flattered, but then I was like, is she good? <laughs> That's awesome. Exactly. But again, there's only one jet. Until. <laughs> Be good. Be very good. <laughs> then I'm fine with that. <laughs> there's only one jet. And, yeah. the, and the way they recycle names is ridiculous. I know. You, you know, think. There, there are so, there's hundreds and thousands of names out there that they could use. Just, I agree. just let there be the brand of ice and jet and let us keep that little brand. But again, they don't want us to keep that. They want the show to be the star. So they're like, well, we're just going to recycle the names. I know. I know. Right. There was a lovely girl, apparently. I didn't see it and I didn't see it being filmed, although I was invited. Um, her name is Comet and... Um, oh, there's a cat trying to get out of the room. Um, I'll show you her. She's very fluffy. Um, but Comet, bless her, she, I think she, in the first episode that was filmed recently, was again taken out of the arena with a very serious ankle and foot injury. Um, and she was the, the closest to being Jet in terms of dark hair and the gymnastic ability and flair or whatever. And I just felt really sorry for her. And I thought, and she was called Comet. So obviously that's something like quick out of the stratosphere, but not quite the jet. <laughs> but not quite <laughs> jet. <laughs> she'll, she'll be back for the next season, I hope. Oh, how many seasons did you do? Did you do oh, all of them? Four and a half. Four and a half How many years. seasons were there over there? Oh, gosh. Uh, I think about nine. Really? Eight to nine years, yeah. So they did about four and a half years to five years, I think, on terrestrial TV. And then, because it's so long ago, uh, then we had Sky and all these huge amounts of channels come through, which hadn't happened before. Uh, and it went to various different, so it had different different audiences. So I think it got about eight and a half to nine years in the end, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a long time. We did, I think we came out with eight seasons. I think okay. we, did, we did eight seasons. Yeah. And in your podcast, I heard that there was a point in time that, yes, you guys wanted more money as well. So I think I think in, initially I just I'm just trying to think about this the other day. Um, I think in the first year after the first season, first year, um, I think Wolf uh, in particular, because he's a businessman, um, there was something about him going right. There was obviously a few of us that more popular Shadow, Wolf, Jet, uh, than others. Can we be paid more? And all of us, I think, had a meeting in a room, which I walked out of because I thought, I'm not politically minded. I'm not very business minded either. So I just thought, do you know what? Whatever. We're all doing the same job. 
But I think their points were either one, you're more popular or two, you're doing more events than the others. So you're higher risk. So I, I got both points, but I thought, I, I don't know, it's a big system to fight. It'll be what it'll be. So, but it, yeah. it's interesting because you guys now see, I kind of, I kind of agree with you where you say, look, we're all doing the same jobs. It doesn't matter who's more popular. I think everybody should make the same amount of pay. But the thing that the Americans were trying to hold out for is we wanted a small percentage of the merchandising. Yeah. yeah. You know, and right. when we saw all the toys and, you know, um, video games and everything across the board, we're like, can we just have a small, tiny, tiny piece maybe? And that's when they were uh, like, no. <laughs> Yeah, but that that's mean because you know you you put literally put the back work in, and made whatever characters that we are or we've become, be what they were to actually you know give some gravitas to any little plastic toy or a figurine or a duvet set or whatever. So yeah, it would only be fair, wouldn't it? But no, I, I don't I don't think they were remotely <laughs> interested other than going. Mm, let's make money from this. Like yeah, on our next. <laughs> Thank you. It's 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 refreshing to hear even the UK gladiators have kind of the same point of view to where even today, I mean, you have injuries. I have injuries <laughs> in the morning. I have to like kind of reach over, grab this to roll over, you know, my lower back, <laughs> stretch a little, you know, and that's all due to hard hitting falling gladiator and it's like, yeah, they made a fortune off of our bodies, you know? And it's just like, yeah, you would think that it would be only fair, but that's the entertainment industry, unfortunately. So how bad are your injuries from the show? What happened? Um, so I nearly broke my neck. Um, I landed at the end of, at the bottom of Pyramid with a very a girl, much bigger and heavier and stronger than I was, but I still managed to get some air time and get her off the pyramid at least three to four tiers down and we got airtime landed at the bottom of the pyramid I just remember that she was next to me but I could see my bum there oh wow and, oh my god oh god but eat your heart out my bum, bum's next to my head and I heard a loud click and I've heard that before when I've broken bones or snap ligaments uh, in the past as a, a, a gymnast or a dancer and I thought was that my neck so I just I flipped very quickly onto my back and just remember thinking, oh, my God, please don't let that have been my neck. But the fact I could feel my hands and my arms, and my legs moving, told me instinctively that actually it wasn't my neck. I'm all right. Um, and that's why I left. Because I thought, you know what, that was too, that was too close a call for me. Uh, at the time, I just loved walking mountains with my dog and teaching a bit of fitness and studying at the university. And I thought, you know what, I, I could do it in a wheelchair if I had to, but why well, I've still got a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little of intelligence just kicked in and thought, you know what, this has been fantastic. Four and a half years. Thank you very much. But I'm gonna I'm gonna bow out while while I'm still there. And that's fantastic. And you know, thank you. But I thought it just wasn't worth it. But what had also been happening all the way through that period uh, prior to GLADS, I'd been a gymnast, uh, Olympic level, national level gymnast as a child, and then all the way through that dance and choreography, and my disc between L4 and L5 uh, had worn down measurably, so I was already suffering with like sciatica, a ruptured disc in my lower spine, let alone any injuries further up into the spine. I just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm not even 26, <laughs> Body's done. So to this day, like yourself, it, I have to be very careful, very measured about how I move. Um, it took me into a world of being interested in spinal rehab, spinal care, Pilates, core conditioning, and all these things. So, yeah, it's, it's, so actually, there's a blessing come out of all of the injuries. Um, but you could argue I was probably a, a bit burnt out even before I started class. <laughs> so how many, so you did it four seasons and, and it's interesting because you chose to, I mean, obviously after that injury, I mean, I would have been freaked out as well, but you actually chose to walk and you're like, okay, I'm done. So yeah. it's interesting because we 
how do I say this? We weren't done. We could have continued. I mean, honestly, we didn't, they didn't let us know when the show was going to end. We got no phone mm -hmm. call. We got no email. We got nothing. We had no idea the show was actually ending. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And then um, we actually, we were doing the live show in Orlando. So that was a whole kind of weird thing, you know, the live show. And even when that ended, they didn't really call us or let us know. We just showed up one night and there was chains on the door. Oh. And yeah, all the gladiators and contenders and everybody were standing out in the parking lot going, what's going on? Who's going to open the doors? And they <clears throat> never came and opened the doors. And that was it. That was the end of it. So did you ever hear no integrity in that? Did you ever hear anything back? Nothing. No, <gasps> nothing. There was no closure. We had no closure whatsoever on that show. Jeez. Exactly. So for our life afterwards, and so it's interesting because you chose to go off and, and live your life and you were just like, okay, I'm ready. I'm done. I want to move on. Well, when we're gladiators and we weren't ready to leave and then we just found out you're done, we were all like, kind of like, oh shit, now what do we do? Right. So that was a wow. whole interesting kind of transition, you know, mm -hmm. from gladiator into normal life type of thing. Yeah. It was yeah. hard. It was very hard. But um, yeah, it's it was it was a great ride though. So, but you guys were like gods over there. When we came over to the UK and we <laughs> saw you were on the side of buses, billboards. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere in the city without seeing some type of photo or poster or builder of the gladiators. We were in awe. We literally were. We were just like, oh, how come we're not this big in the American version? <laughs> A slight clue in that though. America? <laughs> England. <laughs> I know. We always say that. You, I think somebody uh, said uh, jokingly, England was the size of California. <laughs> yes, probably. Yeah. Yeah, but that just uh, that just meant that was such an amazing ride for you. I'm sure. Hold on. Let me see if I have any. I mean, I had like I said, I had so many questions, and I know that we're going over a lot of them. We did the international show. Uh, oh. When you were traveling, you guys got to travel a lot. Was there anybody that you meant like a celebrity, you know, besides yourself, of course. I mean, was there anybody that when you were on Gladiators that you met, you were just like in awe, like, oh my God, that's who I got to meet because you were Jet? Not really. I don't think. Oh. There a, no, there was a lovely guy. There is a lovely guy out there called Vinnie Jones who's since become a, an actor, um, an international actor. In fact, he normally plays quite a baddie. And he was a footballer, uh, footballer, footballer. And he'd come on one of our guest shows. And I remember having a wonderful opportunity to go out to Ibiza um, and do a three-day thing on mountain biking on the pretty side of the island of Ibiza, uh, which is down in the Mediterranean, beautiful. Uh, for GMTV, so many, many years. I'm just trying to pull this out of my head right now. <laughs> and got to sit with him and his then lovely wife um, over breakfast, having fresh squeezed orange juice and a lovely before I was going to go on a mountain bike for three days with the film crew. And I'll never forget meeting Vinny because he then came on to Gladiators as a guest contender when it was Celebrity Gladiators. And I just remember, even though he was playing this bad guy to the like image, and still to this day, he'll do a bit of acting with like these kind of gangster movies and bad guy movies. But his wife, his then wife was with him and she had a, a, a heart condition. And he knew every day was precious with her. And um, I just felt really privileged. And one of my memories is to be, sit with Vinny and his then wife um, and have breakfast with them, complete strangers to me at the time. And just go wow and that's one of my memories so that will always be one of my biggest memories it's having breakfast with Vinnie Jones and his late wife because she didn't make it in the end so yeah that that one probably sorry is it I know that was awesome I love that story now did you have did you 
in England, I'm sure you did. Did you have any crazy fans that you were kind of like, whoa, kind of like stalkerish, kind of like, okay, I'm going to stay to the side over here. Did you ever experience that? Uh, still do. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. And oh, that's why talk nearly 30 years ago. <laughs> it's still happening. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So I know. Bizarre. Bizarre. So do you, uh, how did you handle that? How did you handle the crazy, the crazy fan stalkers? Um, just, just by being a psychotherapist, now that I am with many years experience, it, I know it's about their projection. So it's more about them than me. And their need to uh, project onto me something about themselves, which only, them, only themselves can solve, of course. So I can kind of, I've got an antenna now, which kind of seeks them out and, um, I can I can deal with it really well. I can deal with it very quickly as well. So if it's a PA signing or a Comic Con or something like that, um, you can tell. You, you can tell. You I think you know as well. <laughs> you can tell. Yeah, they have that. They have that. They have that scary look in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, are you still doing personal appearances? A little bit with Comic Cons. Okay. Yeah, a few of them, probably not very many. Uh, not not nothing like what we used to do. Uh, even up until two or three years ago, it's gone very quiet. So yeah, I think I think times are changing. So yeah, <laughs> I actually, it's funny. I just booked my first personal appearance in the last girl. It's been at least twenty years. When, wow. When we when our show ended. And over here in America, if you're not on television, you're not relevant. And right. if you're not on television and you're not relevant, they don't want you at any personal appearances. So it's been about 25. Well, we went off the air, what, 30 years ago? So no, I take it back. It's been 30 years. So yeah. it, it's literally just yesterday I booked my first personal appearance because of the documentary that came out. And that wow. is just. So we're all just like, woohoo, we're going to become relevant again. <laughs> and it's kind of fun doing that. But uh, you're going to love it. Come on, you know me. I'm just such a big ham. I just love that shit. It's, it's fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, so when you oh. think back on the American, uh, not American, yeah, I'm so used to saying American Gladiators. When you think back on the UK gladiators, when you did your, your time, your time, you like that? When you did your time. <laughs> I've been working since, since that. So yeah, we've got so much to talk about. Yeah. Oh anyway, my God. I know. My, see me disappear quickly. It's only because I'm going to go and get my charger because I've had to get you propped up so I could see you properly. So the chargers, I think oh. the battery might go. Go grab your, oh. you had to grab your charger or you have to go ahead. I'm doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> so professional. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's that's the cool thing about my podcast. It's so like non-professional. It's all just relaxed. Yeah, good. I'm glad. <laughs> and I'm actually propping my phone up with some makeup. I don't think this is going to work very well. You are so oh, funny. Sorry. There we go. Oh, just, just me. Right, I'm going to have to stay here. I don't think that's going to work. Just stay there for a second. <laughs> no, you cannot sit on your floor. Now you have to stand. So now you have to tell me. Now you have to tell me about the little drama that you guys had in your team events that we had over here. What kind of drama did you have to deal with with your what? team? <laughs> Oh, Come on, you guys, I know you guys had drama behind the scenes, just like we did. Um, oh, gosh, I, I don't think I was there long enough to see any of the dramas. Um, <laughs> and at the time, I was a bit of a boring fart, so I didn't get involved with anything other than, well, you know what, so I <laughs> just... Oh, I, I get to see, I, I'm actually seeing the side of your bottle, whatever that's propped up, which is funny because I'm trying to read the ingredients in it. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's right. There that's you go. Right. Right. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Exactly. Exactly. 
Like I'm on, I'm on my knees now. I'm literally on my knees. <laughs> so you're just chilling, enjoying life now, having your yeah. your your work, and that's pretty cool. So, are yeah. you where you want to be right now in life? Yeah, I am. I am. It's taken a long time to get there. Um, I won't lie. Um, I could cry, but I won't. I sadly left the south of England and moved to the northwest of England for something that wasn't what it seemed and ended up, um, yeah, really hurt um, badly. Lots of police, uh, mental health, because suffered because of uh, basically domestic abuse. And I don't mind even going on record and saying that. It was, it was horrendous, Laurie. It was really horrendous and it just put me off relationships and everything for life because it wasn't my problem it as a psychotherapist because people are like you should know you should know better you're a psychotherapist I'm like yeah but I'm still human and I make mistakes too um and it taught me a lot about relating trusting people and and then actually then not trusting people so I went off on my own for a long long time and did a lot of repair a lot of recovery a lot of reading about psychopathology because they're out there and uh, they often present very brilliant brilliant profile great intellect very progressive but then if they're damaged then that damage comes out with me in the end so I had to plan an escape and that's a few years ago now. It's about 13 years ago now. And I had to repair and, and pull myself back together, wrote thousands of words, of which I've not published, but maybe one day. Uh, only if it's of help to anybody else, because it happens. It happens every day. And we all make mistakes, as I said. But right now, um, oh, I've done a contract in a male prison. Um, which I loved working again with veterans, uh, guys that had been in the Army, Navy, um, RAF, and um, just trying to understand better the pathology behind why they do what they do um, out of my own personal research, but out of a compassion really for what pushes people to their extreme. And as long as they're not taking it out on others, that's fine. And then uh, just over a year ago, a gorgeous lady approached me in my local supermarket and asked me if I was, and um, over a year later, we're going to get married. <laughs> wow. I know, right? <laughs> and so I was just going to ask you if your country knew this. <laughs> Probably not. And I don't care. It's, you know, we are, we are all what we are and it doesn't matter. I, I don't, don't give a damn. I find that so refreshing and brilliant that and I'm, I'm going to so, use, I'm gonna I'm use your word I'm brilliant. brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. I'm safe and I'm loved and there's no threat to me anymore. And that's what means the world to me. Uh, and also Zoe and my best friend, Tony, who are, I know, down there in the living room somewhere and they're going to come up and say hello towards the end of the podcast that's <laughs> awesome that is diane for you how how okay so now i get to ask you these questions i'm sorry i'm going to ask them now how is that for you to actually god i hate this term and it's not even the same for you it's not like i mean <laughs> god it even sounds stupid to say coming out i mean literally coming out to where this is this is this is new. It's like you're going into a whole different world. And what's so cool about it is you're right. You don't care. And see, that's how I was, you know, but when I was on the show, obviously the producers and directors are all like, no, you cannot come out. You cannot be gay. You cannot bring your girlfriends. You cannot do this shit. So, and I think for me, once you tell me I cannot do something, that's when I get mad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, but I mean, it's for, it's so, I mean, today's day and age, I mean, literally anything, people are so accepting of everyone and yeah. it doesn't matter who you are because it's a matter of who you are as a person. It shouldn't matter who uh -huh. your partner is, who gives a shit who your partner is. 
Exactly. So Diane Udell Jet, holy shit, has a girlfriend. <laughs> That's amazing. Good <laughs> That's for you. Answer. I'm so happy for you. That is, it's <laughs> really incredible for you. And I don't even. No, really, I'm really. I mean, back in the day, it would be like, you're so brave, but now it's like, who cares? <laughs> I'm loved and I'm safe and I'm very happy. Do you want to meet my fiance and my best friend, Tony? Oh my God, bring him in. Let's see. Yes. Big friend, Tony from Middlesbrough and Zoe, my fiance. One second. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here's BG2. There we go. Oh, there's Tony. Did she give you everything you needed? I believe she gave me everything I need. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. You too. I love the irony that I'd messaged you literally about 24 to 48 hours beforehand, and I genuinely knew nothing about this. No way. That is so cool. <laughs> Tony knows everything about the British Gladiators, so if you ever need an interview with a proper oracle, Here's Tony. She's too kind. She's too kind. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm so very nice to meet you. I love that. All right. Who, where is Zoe at? Let's meet this. Where's Zoe at? This she fiance woman. Come on. Well, hello <laughs> there. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Very nice to meet you. And you, and you haven't done my hair. I feel really embarrassed. Really oh, whatever. <laughs> I don't care, I haven't done mine. It's all for fun. It's just so good to see you guys. Oh, I mean, how cool us. is this that we get to have a Zoom session from America all the way over to the UK? <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Fantastic. I have to arrange my hair now. <laughs> Diane, girl, you <laughs> haven't changed a bit. Tell her to stop playing with her hair. <laughs> She always does. Gorgeous. I know. She hasn't changed a bit. She's constantly like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a habit now. <laughs> By the way, loving the podcast. Thank you loving so very much. Time. She's great, isn't she? Yes. Good. Just saying, when we were, we were having a little conversation beforehand, it was like, she will call you out. I've listened to the podcast. She will <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't out. call anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> I just try to have fun. And I mean, it's so funny because I was listening. I was telling Diane, I was listening to the glad pod all week, trying to get different tidbits from what happened in the UK on their team compared to our team. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I was like, Oh my God, I just want to get her on the phone and say hello and just have a, a, a good talk and have some fun. But it's like, this is awesome because the United States, America gets to see a UK you know, Jet from over there. And it's like, she was the most popular. I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep saying she was the most popular because that's what everybody knows. And they love to hear from you guys. And that's why I'm so excited about this podcast because I can interview you guys over there on a Zoom session. So how fun is that? Thank you so much. I'm so cool. It's so cool for you to take time out of your, your day and your evening for this. And I so appreciate it. I know it was hard to get together. He was, yeah. So you guys, Jet, I'm sorry, Diane, Jet, because everybody loves that. Um, before <laughs> I let you go, before I let you go, uh -huh. I do a little rapid fire question. Yes, and they're fun, and they're fun. And oh. yes, and now I get to add, and now I get to go with you and, and do a, a rapid fire as kind of like a bonus podcast for my Patreons. Are you ready for that? <laughs> Shall we step out of frame? No, I've got my support crew. I need them. I need them. Okay, stay, stay, stay. But otherwise, I, I will give you good money to stay. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God, Diane Udell, Jet from the UK Gladiators. Thank you so much for being on my podcast. I absolutely loved every second of it. I'm sure I didn't even <laughs> ask half the questions I wanted to ask. But um, if anything, we'll reconvene. So thank you again for coming on Chilling with Ice. And until next time, until I fly over and see you, I want to say goodbye. Bye, my lovely. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share. 
wherever you listen to your podcast. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' With Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetrick. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chillin' With Ice.